All right, first one of the year. Let's see if we can tee this off. You can do it. I have <laughs> faith in you. <laughs> That's all I need. Yeah, I have faith in you. There's, again. You got this. I'm going to figure it out. Yeah. There's always been the old adage of friends are just family you meet along the way. The person across from me fits into that old adage quite well. With me today is a friend, photographer, and the Cosmic Soul Sister I never knew I had. Breaking away from tradition, I'm recording live from her studio and not mine. For the first episode of the year, I'm happy to be sitting down with my friend and soon to be yours, the lovely Miss Carrie Ann Kelly. First and foremost, thank you for letting me take over your studio for the next who knows how many hours and to kind of kick off the conversation. Unbeknownst to me, it seems like you and I share a lot of common ground because you're original for, originally from the Philadelphia area, and yes. that's where a lot of my family camps out. Yeah. So we had that weird like point system like, of like definitely we've known each other in a past life. Like, it has it, it has to have been. Yes. There's all there's that weird cosmic yeah. connection that just brings it all back. Yeah. So I guess from Pennsylvania to California, you know, what was the aha moment that made you go, yeah, this is this is where I need to be. Just in like either SoCal, South O, or yeah. whatever. So I always explain it like I, it's weird because I had been to California a few times, actually only twice in my whole life. I went to San Francisco when I was like a kid, and then went to Santa Barbara and like traveled along, you know, down Southern California when I was eighteen. And I always knew I was gonna come back here at some point. And then when I moved here, I just can't explain it. But like the first time I drove down this exact stretch of Coast Highway. I was like, this is where I belong. And it just felt like this like coming home thing. And that's why I talk about past lives a lot because like I really do feel like in my most recent past life, like I lived here. Maybe that's where my journey ended in that life. And so it felt like a coming home moment. And I've just never felt like I've lived in a lot of places and I've just never felt so um, like welcome in a way as when I did when I moved here. Like I just feel like the community kind of just has this like soul and just this warm welcoming vibe that just makes you feel like there's space for you and as someone who has moved so many different places that's really hard to find because you often feel like an outsider you feel like you're just someone moving in kind of like taking over and you just want to be like mindful of the community and the small businesses and so that's why I love Oceanside so much it is just so special. Well, and even the, well, and there's the other thing, like, I've learned just traveling back and forth from East Coast, you know, back to West Coast, where, like, home base is, there's an attitude on the East Coast. Oh, yeah. And when you fly over here, yeah. you either have to shake it off or you're going to get humbled. because oh, absolutely. The, it, it's so strange, like, going into Pennsylvania and going into New York and all those areas, it's just, like, everybody seems so, like, high strung. Then you come out to, like, San Diego or whatever, yeah. and everybody just is like, yeah, we yeah, no, I'll never forget the first time I went to Revolution Roasters. The first day, like, they're like, so what are you doing today? Like, after I placed my coffee order, and I'm like, what's this? Why do you so care? Like, oh, you care? Yeah. Like, because I'm just so used to, like, the East Coast mentality, which is, like, you just order your coffee. No one cares about you. They may remember your name if you're a regular, but, like, that's the extent of it. I mean, I was a regular at coffee shops on the East Coast, too, but, like, here I've met so many friends. And so it's just, are you fine? No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> you scared me. <laughs> no, but I'm it's just, just a scary person. Okay. <laughs> but no, it's, I mean, people are so friendly here, but it's hard not to make friends. And so it's so unique in that way that like, I, you know, in other places that I live on the East Coast, I've made friends through joining gyms or, you know, like jobs or putting myself out there. But here, I've made friends so organically just because the community is so friendly. Well, I mean, you and I have a connection because it just came out of nowhere. Like, yeah. I just remember, like, scrolling Instagram one day and yeah. just going, Carrie Ann Kelly Studios, who the hell? Like, yeah. and I, oh, at yeah, first, so well, at first, it's one of those things where you just keep getting those, like, random DMs from yeah. just, like, businesses where it's yeah. like, I don't care about sponsorship. Mm -hmm. Hey, I just moved in the neighborhood, da 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 I love your podcast. Oh, my God, she's a real person. Like, yes. you know, it was so wholesome. And I was like, oh, my God, thank you so and much. And I followed you because I thought you were a record store. And I was looking, like, for, because I, you know, Nick is really into vinyl, obviously. And so I came across your profile. I don't know how I did. I might have been, maybe, like, Bound reshared something. But Nick knew who you were. He, like, knew because when I said, like, oh, like, I think I shared your account. And I'm like, oh, I really thought you were a record store. 
and he, I like shared your profile with him, and he was like, "Oh yeah, oh, I, I follow him." That guy. He's like, he's like, he always hangs out at Bound. He's like super tall. Like, he has glasses. Kind of looks like a toothpick that yeah. came to life. Yeah. yeah no, I know that guy. Because he like knew who you were, and I was like, "Wait, he's not a record store." And he's like, "No, he just like collects vinyl." And yeah. yeah. No, he's just one of those you know yeah. record store weirdos. Hangs out yeah. for way too many hours and yeah. knows. Uh, you know you go to a record store too much uh, because when you can call in the shop. Yeah. Because, okay, my go-to store, I'm not going to tell the name because things need to remain secret. Yes. But when they answer and just go, hey, I'm, I've got a question on stock. Oh, John, good to hear from you. I haven't heard you in a while. I'm just yeah. like, okay. And you, <laughs> you almost want to just hang up the phone and go, I, I, mean, I have a problem. I'm that guy. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, no, I've become that guy. Yeah, I'm yeah. officially that. <laughs> I'm officially that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's kind of gratifying at the same time because it's yeah. just like I'm a regular there. You are, and people know you, and yeah. you like leave an impression, you know. And I think that's what's so cool about you is when I did, I I don't know what drew me to listen to your podcast. I think it's just because I have a natural, like I like to learn about people, and so um, I no better way to learn. Yeah, and <laughs> I've had to. Re I felt so compelled to reach out to you after you shared your experience of seeing Paul McCartney, and I I just really like related to it and I was like I need to let this person know that like I'm appreciative of this story that you shared because it, it really just is one of those things where you don't really think on those memories too often and so it really like was just a joyful experience and no so, and I and that's what that was like the real connection because I did that because it was like right when COVID kind of it was like halfway through COVID I think or like something like that where I was like I need to just do a sit down and just finally just do this, yeah. you know, manifest this thing. <laughs> exactly. um, so that's why I made that little thing. And eventually, yes. I, you know, it's weird. I don't want to do solo podcasts because I was just like, I get sick of hearing my own voice after a while. Definitely. So I was like, I just need to interview people. So you have such a good voice. it is but appreciated. People want, to hear you talk. <laughs> <laughs> people want to, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about that. I don't even want to hear myself talk. I know. Um, I know. It's just, it, it's so strange. Like, oh yeah, I have a podcast. Do you listen to your voice? No. No, I just hit record and then I hit upload and then it's just, you know. No, I listen through bits and pieces <laughs> yeah. to make sure like the audio is all even. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, we're good. And then just upload yeah, it and then just get the feedback later. Yeah. So that actually brings up a fun little one of question. Okay. What's the first show you went to and do you remember it? Oh my God, are you kidding me? Of course I remember it. So my, okay, my mom would argue. <laughs> So I saw two concerts, the, fir the first year I ever saw live music, I saw two shows. And so my mom would argue that she took me to see Cheryl Crow first, but I'm pretty positive that I saw Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers first <gasps> when I was like six years old. <laughs> oh my God. And my dad took me and it was, I still remember it, um, it was in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And we were, you know, we weren't close by any means, but it was just, I mean, that is where, like, I fell in love with Tom Petty, and I remember being six years old, and, like, this guy next to my dad, like, everyone was just, like, jamming and vibing, and everybody was loving it, and then the guy next to me, like, he was just like, do you want me to lift you up? And he, like, lifted me up so I could see, and it was just, I remember that, and I, it wasn't creepy, oddly enough. Um, now, today, it would be creepy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it would not be acceptable today, but that was a different <laughs> time. Um, but yeah, I, that's what I remember my first show being, um, but like I said, my mom would argue that it was Cheryl Crow, which was also a really good show. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see her. I fell She's in love with amazing. her because of the car soundtrack when I was like seven. Yeah. Like no. she, what was She's it? Amazing. Real Gone was the song, I think. Yeah. It was, it's great. Um, yeah. Oh, so I was gonna, I'm sure your campus had it too. Yeah. Um, but at, um, Cal State, you know, you would get random posters up for like, um, what's the crap? What's the festival in Del Mar? Um, Kaboo? No, I think you it's. Would know better than I me. think it's Kaboo. You're Mr. California. Well, mm -hmm, in quotations. <laughs> um, but that's they started doing that one just a couple years ago, and I remember it was my sophomore year of college, and mm -hmm. I saw that uh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers were going to mm -hmm. be headlining. And it was October something. I called my dad. I go, we should go. Yeah. And he was like, oh, I already looked at passes. They sold out or they're 700 to, on for like on resale. Oh and I was like, eh, it's okay. We'll catch him on, the, on his next tour. He died six months later or like three months later. And I was like, 
So you never got to see him? Never got to see I him. I got to see him three times, so I saw him enough for the both of us. That, there you go. I'm funny good with story that. story on my second oh, there you uh, go. time. So I can't remember if it was Tom Petty as himself or Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Um, I was trying to look up the show online to see like if I could figure out who, but it doesn't matter. But Robert Plant opened up for him. What? And I feel like that'd be reversed. Where yeah, it should right? be Tom Petty opening up for Robert Plant. Yeah, I know. Plant. Yeah, so Robert Plant opened up for him. And um, I was like, I don't know, I want to say I was like 10 years old. And just a typical like Carrie Ann moment, like foot in mouth moment. I'm, I'm like sitting there with my dad, who is the reason why I have like the taste in music that I do. And it all goes back to the parents. Yeah. And Robert Plant's on stage, and I'm like, you know, I loved Tom Petty as a kid. Like, that was my first show. And so I was like, I was just like, to my dad, I was like, who's this old fat guy? <laughs> and my dad was like, that's you're, Robert Plant. You're in the presence of God. <laughs> yeah, like, what? Yeah, so, I mean, obviously I didn't know who that was because I didn't know who Led Zeppelin was at the time, but um, it's a funny story that I love to tell because people have always have the same reaction. They're like, wow. <laughs> it's like, really? Yeah. That's what you, that really, and yeah. Also, just like, yeah, what you said is like Robert Plant opening up for Tom Petty, but I feel like Tom Petty is like, in my world, like, I don't feel like he's underrated, but I feel like in a lot of people that like classic rock, like, he is a little underrated. Yeah, he doesn't get enough credit. Him? Yeah, like, he doesn't get enough credit, but I think he's a really, like, huge household name. Oh, yeah, for sure. Opinion, well, so. I mean, like, <laughs> Damn the Torpedoes, Wildflowers. Yeah. Um, Full moon fever. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I mean, that's what I grew up with. I mean, yeah. So it's it was just funny. And then the third time I saw him, I was 18 and I had like nosebleeds and it was just more about just like listening to the music. Well, I mean, that was like me buying last minute tickets <laughs> to go like see Tool a couple weeks yeah, ago. I was yeah. like, you know what? The set list looks too good not to see it live. Yeah, so I just, you just went. You have to go and just enjoy being far away uh, and listen. Yeah. My parents were just like, so were the seats any good? I was like, they were great yeah as long as you get to hear it if i can hear it and see it sort of and the screens nowadays are so big i mean even at dead and co i was like i was really close but i'm like i can look at this screen and it's like amazing well it's funny so (laughs) quick context for everyone listening carrie ann and i were at the same show i'm actually wearing the dead and company tour shirt um i don't remember what day it was but i think it was like it's in October, I want yeah, to say. Yeah, it was at the end of October. I remember it was like the 28th or something. Yeah, it was, some, it was close to like Halloween because yeah. they were doing three nights at the Hollywood yes. Bowl. They held out on us on that set they list. Did. And I, I, refu- I refused to argue yeah, about no, that. I totally. Nick and I were like, are you kidding? But we did get 25 minutes of St. Stephen. So yeah, it's like. I won't complain. But, but I'm still not ready to forgive still yet. Still not super thrilled. And it's like, I just can't afford to go and, well, one, I can't take the time. But like, I'm, I'm not a. Deadhead, so no, like, I don't. Really well, I, I'm not either. Like, yeah. if they if they come to town, I'm gonna go see them, oh, but yeah. I'm not gonna travel with the band. That's no. just too much. It was cool to see John Mayer. Yeah, um, it was my first time seeing him. Before. Me too. But um, back to your point, where yeah. you were just like, we were in the, you were basically like in the pits, but could see everything on the screen. Yeah, I was way back, like yeah. right. I was a section before you were on the lawn. Yeah, and I could still see everything. Oh, yeah. It was great. I remember seeing your photos on on mm-hmm. Instagram and. You could still see everything. Yeah, so. like, you can't complain about that. I brought my uh, shout out to my buddy Tyler from the Bay Area. I uh, I remember texting him. This was like a year ago, because uh, again, COVID. Yeah. Love to ruin everything. Yeah, um, I was I was just like, hey, I'll buy our tickets if you drive down. He was like, bet, let's do that. Yeah, done. So he came say down no and more. Like, exactly. It was so much fun. Yeah. Um, because it was my first like experience with like actual like. Grateful Dead music. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I'd listened to it before, but it was one of those things where, like, I think even John Mayer said, where he was like, I've heard it before, but I just didn't get it. Yeah. And then eventually yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. I get it now. No, it's kind of crazy. And I feel like everyone shares that, like, commonality of, like, how they get into Grateful Dead, right? Mm-hmm. Like, how I was raised. So, my dad, when he was a teenager, he listened to, like, Sabbath and Rolling Stones, and he was, like, definitely more edgy. And, and I grew up not listening to like bands like the Beatles because I listened to like the Stones and Sabbath and stuff like that. And so naturally he always, I mean, my dad loves the Grateful Dead now and appreciates their music. I mean, he has a lot of their vinyl, but <clears throat> he would always like kind of make fun of the Deadheads, Like, oh, it's just a bunch of drum circles. And everybody's just like, 
kumbaya and like to be fair they also make fun of themselves so it's it's all it's all a loving joke so yeah but But he's not entirely wrong right but i grew up not like i mean i i just had an uninformed opinion of the grateful dead Mm -hmm. and then it wasn't until i watched freaks and geeks have you ever seen that no one season there's a episode towards the end of the season you should watch it it's really good um, it takes place in the 70s, so it's oh, just hell like, yeah, a lot of good music. Mm-hmm. It's like James Franco's like first ever like acting thing, Seth Rogen's in it. It's really good. It's actually a really good show. But it only ran for one season, and towards the end of the show, the main character is in the principal's office, and he hands her American Beauty. And he's like giving her this like lecture on why it's such a great album. And then at the end, they play Box of Rain, and they all get into a VW bus and sail off into the unknown. Yeah. Presumably to go follow the Grateful Dead, but I remember when I heard Box of Brain, I was like listening to it on repeat because that's kind of how I am. Like I know you're someone who like dives into full like albums, but I am that person who hears one yeah. song and goes, "I have to hear that yeah, many so, times." That yeah. was me with um, uh, crap. I for, it might have actually also been Box of Rain. Uh, I can't remember which one, but. I was at Schoolyard Records off of Wisconsin Street, yeah. and Riz had a bunch of cassettes, and he had American Beauty there for like a buck ninety nine. I was yeah. like, and at the time I had I had a my first car was a O <laughs> one Volvo, and it it was you know at that mm-hmm. point it was almost a twenty year old car, yeah. and I had just turned sixteen, so I now had that little bit of autonomy where I could drive wherever I wanted yeah. within reason. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, oh, I'm gonna go get like a freaking cassettes because my car had a cassette yes, deck in it. Yes. Oh yeah, I'm sure you know, like having the cassette yes. with the audio cord to oh, plug yeah. into your phone. Exactly. Oh yeah. yeah, that's that's how I rolled in yes. that car. Okay, um, uh, yeah, no, seriously, until it like <laughs> blew up, and I was like, well, well <laughs> so much for that. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, no, I bought American Beauty. I was like, I always see this album. What's the point? Yeah. And I I remember driving. I think I just drove PCH one day and just yeah. listened to oh, that record. And I was like, yeah, it's a good album. Yeah. I understand why people like it. Yeah. But it was one of those things of like, I liked it, but I just didn't get it. You didn't have your own moment at that point. No. You know what I mean? I feel like that's how it always is. And I don't remember it. when that moment <laughs> came, but when it did, I was just like, I need to have a day or week or month of just listening to nothing but dead records yeah. and live albums and all that stuff. Yeah. So I like made that dive in yeah. and just kind of immersed myself. Yeah. And right now I'm doing the same immersion, but it's been with like Steely Dan and the and Walter and Donald's like respective solo careers, which yeah. is just so much music. But I still feel like a freak because I'm just like I've listened to Steely <laughs> Dan for six and a half months straight. There's there what why? why I don't know, but the music's yeah, great. It's actually you know? funny we're talking about that because Nick was wearing a shirt that has. I don't know if you're familiar with the show The Sopranos, but it has like Tony from The Sopranos on it. And it's like a steely, it says Steely Dan. I don't really understand the reference. I know the guy who makes that shirt. Okay. His name, <laughs> I'm not going to say his name, yeah. but he goes by Double Wonderful, okay. and I love him. Okay, well, I wearing... bought the shirt okay. from him that is Black Flag's logo, but yes. it says Black Cow because of the song. Yeah. And I was just, I saw The Soprano one. I was like, yeah. Somebody's gonna jump through the screen when they listen to this. When I admit this, I've never seen The Sopranos, and I've been wanting to yeah, because should. I love crime shows. I yes. grew up watching The Godfather. Very good. Oh, I know it is because I've seen scenes on YouTube. I was like, I need to watch very the whole good. series. Oh, but it's they, you, you can't find it anywhere on like Prime or whatever it's because not on... it's on Amazon Prime. But I don't want to like pay a bunch of money for like the seasons. I'll sooner just go buy the entire series because yeah, I know like, it'll be good. Yeah, but, no, you know. it's it's one of I love HBO shows and The Sopranos is one of my all time favorite shows and so is it, it. Same thing with Nick. Like we absolutely love it and you would just, you'll just love it because it's like in the nineties. It's like East Coast. Like, yeah, it's just such a time and place. And but it's just funny because Nick was wearing that shirt yesterday and I guess Steely Dan was like playing in the background at our friend's house and I'm like oh it's Steely Dan and he's like. I don't really like Steely. It's like a typical Nick comment. I don't really like Steely Dan. I just bought it because the Sopranos. <laughs> oh my god! Like this is uh, yeah. That's why yeah. I love Nick. <laughs> just, I know. It's just you. You know exactly what you're getting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and it's funny talking with him because like he'll walk up in like a band shirt. And I'm like, I don't know them. He goes, dude, you have. Too. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. like he's just because like he just carries himself so well, yeah. and he just has that energy of just like, 
well, if you don't know, you better know. I know, and it's you know. very, like, just cut and dry to the point. No, but like, that's why I appreciate yeah. him and, and like, other yeah. people like that because yeah. it's like, oh, there's no veil. There's no, no BS. He's just going to tell you. Exactly. And it's great. Yes. You need those people. Yes. I know I have my fair share. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, but, yeah, Box of Rain, man, I listen to that on repeat. Like, when I find a song that I'm obsessed with, it's, like, I'm surprised it doesn't show up on my Spotify, like, most played because I will, like, play it till it's dead. Mm-hmm. And that's what I did with that song. And then it wasn't until, like, a few years later that Nick actually got into the Grateful Dead and he was playing, like, St. Stephen and, like, you know, a few other. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, I actually do like the Grateful Dead, not just, like, Box of Rain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for so long, it was just that song. Well, I don't remember, like, what happened, but... I think Estimated Profit was on somewhere, and I was like, I don't know who this band is, but I just know I really like the song, and I found out it was The Dead. I go, oh, yeah. I get it now. Yeah. Yeah. And then listen to all the whole Terrapin Station record, just like, this is a masterpiece, yeah. and I need everything. Yeah, and it's funny, because Nick's been into The Dead for a while, because it was before we moved here that he started like getting into them. And I remember when you started getting into them, he was like, oh, John's getting into The Dead. like getting all he's like getting all the vinyl and like oh just like that is it. still the strangest story of how and i don't remember yeah, if I because told that. you just got a bunch of it like so driving. i uh my parents had just retired it was my dad's birthday and we were driving into oregon and washington okay, it was like up north yeah we were up north we were in salem oregon and again i can't help myself if i'm in a place that i've never been i want to find a local record shop yeah, because duh. yeah that's it, like me with coffee it's like yeah exactly it's like coffee thing. shops and record stores yeah because that's where the real like the real people of the heart of the city yeah exactly congregate like yes your starbucks your whatever no. No, no. I need to find the one that's a hole in the wall coffee shop or just this random broom closet record store yeah. because that's where the real yes, like that's where it's face of the community down. is there. Exactly. Yeah. So I get to this this shop and it it's it's a jet ski repair shop. I remember you telling me. That. So I walk it. I walk up into the into the lot and I go, Hey, uh, I'm looking for the is the record. I'm looking for Jet Records. Is it like on the other block? And the, and the guy that I was talking to, his name's Mike Portnabow. I hope I'm saying his last name right. He's the lead singer for an 80s metal band called Glacier. And there's the, the machine's starting to run again because they're about to go on, I think, tour and go play a couple festivals. Their last record was great. Okay. Um, but he had his entire forearm in the engine block of a jet ski. And he goes, oh, no, it's that. And he's pointing with his other hand going, oh, no, 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 it's to your right. Uh. And he yells out <laughs> to the other Mike. Um, who I'm blanking on his last name. And he's like, Mike, there's a kid here who wants to go look at records. Okay. <laughs> you know, he's working yeah. on God knows what else. Yeah, he's like, I got, it's got to get done. Yeah, it was just yeah. like, I got it's, this. It's I ended up staying there for almost two hours. My parents, like, I was del- like, We will see you later. Oh, no, they were going to visit family that my mom okay. hadn't seen in probably like 30 years. And uh, she was like, we had a time constraint. We're going to be an hour late. I was like, listen, Sorry. I have things to do. The music is speaking. I was like, on. I'll walk. It's fine. Yeah. You know, it was just like a typical <laughs> comment for me because yeah. I'm that uncompelled smart ass where yeah. I'm just like, I'll just walk. I'll walk. Like, this yeah. is important. But <laughs> I was scrolling through like different records and this dude is a total metal head, which is great. Yeah. Um, you know, he's in just a black tank top. Yeah. Smells like motor oil oh, si- yeah. and cigarettes oh, and he's yeah. got just tattoos. Definitely he's great. Right out of the 80s. Ser- no, seriously. <laughs> um, but he's dropping knowledge on all these bands that I've never heard of out of oh, Oregon yeah. and parts of California. But I'm scrolling through all these dead records going, man, I can't believe you have so much Grateful Dead. Like, you, I can't yeah, find like it where I'm at. Yeah. yeah, I was shocked just because like you can't track. find dead records. And he just looks at me like, well, this is a Eugene kid. And I go, I have no clue what that means. Yeah. And he like reeled back, go, <laughs> where the hell are you from? I'm from San Diego. I, I can't it. find dead records. Go, oh my God, I was stationed in you know San Diego in yeah. the 80s when I was in the Navy and yeah. all this stuff. So he has me on a mission to like find all these old fan magazines and like bands oh from the God. San Diego to Orange County area that he wants to put on his like little yes. record label. Um, you know, yeah, jet ski repair shop, a record store, and runs a power metal label. And he's just killing it at life. And he's just hanging. Yeah, he's, he's just, just hanging. living his best life. He repairs jet skis to pay for the label to make records. Yeah. I'm so in on it. It's yeah. great. I think it's called Scorpion and Metal Records or something. And that's where you got something. your entire Grateful Dead collection. 
right? everything. Yeah, 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 you just everything. I uh, you hit the jackpot. I did. I, it was one of those things where I was like, you know what? The music gods had it out for you. Yeah, I was just like, rock and roll is a rock and roll is alive and well. Yeah, yeah. I just pull all that stuff out. I, I, oh, I'm a professional. I brought my record store day bag, filled that thing to the yeah. brim. I didn't even have. We were in Washington for just a couple of days, so I didn't end up going to any record stores. Yeah. I tried to go to one, but it was closed. Oh. Thank God for yeah. my wallet yeah. and my parents, because yeah. I would have been there for hours. They were like over it. Oh no! When my when I walked back. I was like, they were closed. My mom goes, oh, thank God. And yeah, I was like, they were already, they knew what was. I was like, hey, <laughs> hey, I can't help it. It's yeah. fun, um, but yeah, there was a. Uh, it's that same thing. Yeah. You find your local record shop. You find your local coffee shop because mm-hmm. that's where all the like legit yeah, that's community you, is. Definitely, yeah, yeah, that's how I am. Anytime I go to a new place, I just I'm like, let me find a coffee shop, and then I will like able to figure out where I need to be. That's the lay of the land. Yeah, that's the lay of the land. Um, exactly. I remember uh, we were on Bainbridge Island to go visit some cousins. Where's that? Excuse me. It's a, it's a 30 minute ferry from Seattle. Okay. So it's one of the Channel Islands. Okay. And my, uh, my cousin is an artist up in Bainbridge, but he's a total deadhead. So when I, when I got there, I had never met him. My parent, my mom hadn't seen um, them for how long but um he walks up and he's just i loved him so much <laughs> uh, he just goes i hear you bought dead records i go yeah i got a whole bag of them he goes i want to see them yeah, and i just hand, <laughs> yeah i just handed them to him I and he just that. remembers i just remember scrolling through coin yep i remember where i was listening to this i remember he goes oh i, I love this. this is my favorite record this is what i listen to when i'm doing all my artwork and all my like you know um yeah so nice. shout out to my North, uh, North America, my northern cousins. Yeah, North I miss Coast. them greatly. Can't wait to see them North again. Coast, I, I have no idea. I just made that up. <laughs> I like have no right making up any kind of name for out here. So I'm not from here. <laughs> but I just, de- I you're, just you're, like, you're, North Coast. you're close. You're, you've almost, you know, there's, uh, there's the unspoken rule that you have to be, you have to be a resident for ten years to call yourself a local. You're getting there. Yeah. But you have such an outreach in the community. Like I am amazed at just how quickly you know you move from literally across the country and you've got yeah. numbers instagram handles facebook's yeah. twitter's whatever <laughs> and you've already made like such a deep connection to the community it's insane what you have manifested and i love it cuz i get to see it from the sidelines going she how does she know them <laughs> it's such a compliment coming from you because i have dubbed you mr oceanside like that's what cat and i call you literally like <laughs> Really, Mr. California, but specifically Mr. Oceanside. Like, if there's it, it, when you just get it's it's weird. It's just like you know everybody yeah. knows everybody here. Yes. It's well, just such an intimate little city. And that's why I like take my role in this community so seriously because like it has that like I remember I felt a little freaked out about it, especially like when I wanted to get back into surfing because it's such like a locals vibe like not in a bad way but it's just like this community cares about its people yeah which i really respect because it is just you find in on the east coast it's just different especially like in a bigger city like philly like you have your pockets and your little neighborhoods and the, like those are the communities and so it's just like but it's still hard to feel like you're a part of something when you're living in a bigger city and when you live in a place like this it's like you really see very easily like how much people care about each other here and how much they care about keeping it local right and so i always was like super nervous to get a studio here because i'm like huh, like i'm not local <laughs> like it I'm doesn't not- well it, and it doesn't matter like yeah. um i know there's that joke where it's like oh yeah oceanside locals only but but yeah. but but we're not like we it's say like I feel like we just say it as a joke. Yeah. But some people I, I hate when people take it seriously, like, oh if you're from out of town, you don't surf here, blah 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 blah. This yeah. is for Oceanside, Carlsbad, whatever only. Yeah. But we're not like that. No, we are so really. laid back here where it's just like, you know, you can go surf with somebody and you're like, Oh, where are you from? Oh, I'm from, you know, Boise. Yeah. Really? What are you doing out here? You yeah. know, you're in a land. You're just, what, everyone's so friendly here. Yeah. You know? like, but like it, that's like the one thing we had new neighbors move into the neighborhood and uh you know, the one thing I was telling them about, I was like, everybody knows what everybody's doing, but we're not nosy. No. Like, we just hang out it's and just, just let you know what's going on in the world. Yeah, That's yeah. it. You know, it's nothing just like, oh, so what are you doing? Like, you have to reciprocate that. Yeah. 
it does, you don't even need to tell us anything, yeah. but you're still going to be in tune with what's going on. Yeah. You know, it's like when I'm messaging you on like whether I'm texting you or like DMing you stuff in the neighborhood, yeah. just like, hey, I don't know what you're doing, but yeah. you and Nick should come out to this yeah. or, you know, seeing stuff yeah. through uh, like business pages and just yeah. going, and when did you get involved with that? And, yeah. you know, blah, 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 just blah. Like sharing. It, seriously, it's all, it's again, it's all interconnected here. Yeah. It's so weird. We are in like the greatest little pocket of just the world. I know. Yeah. I truly can't believe that I found my way here. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, I've, there's, I've heard that yeah. same story of just like, man, we yeah. just were here one day and just went, we don't want to leave. Yeah, no, I mean, that's like kind of what informed Nick getting out of the military. And so, because I had to have a conversation because I was, I mean, this was before I got the studio, but I, it was like fall of 2020 or like summer of 2020. And I was like, look, I'm like really growing my business here. I really... I'm rooting myself here. I feel like I'm a part of the community. Like I want to continue to grow. I see myself getting a studio here. I don't want to move. So I need you to figure out whether you want to stay in the military or not. And if you don't, because I know you, I figured you, he didn't because he didn't like it. I'm like if you don't, then like, let's make a move for you to get out so that we can stay here. Because I knew that if he stayed in, we were not going to get like, we weren't going to have orders continued here. Like we would definitely have moved. So. Right. So yeah, I was like, I'm just sick of it. My, my time is not up. No, I know. Well, and <laughs> like, that's so one of those. Hard to do. Like, right, absolutely. Well, that's why I was like, hey, welcome home. Like, yeah. you're you're not leaving anytime soon, <laughs> no. I don't think. Yeah, no. no. Again, it's like this, it's the, what is it, hiding in plain sight, just like this hidden secret that everybody just somewhat knows about. Yeah. But other people where it's just like, we can't, it's so weird just like, you know, having my one side of my family being here for almost like, yeah. It's hard to believe that in, you know, it's 2022, in like eight and a half years, my one side of my family had been here for over a hundred years. Yeah. I'm getting here in like 1930. Yeah. That's crazy yeah. to think about. Well, especially because the West Coast is not as old as the East Coast. No. Obviously. It, seriously. Um, but so that is true. I mean, seriously, when you think about like the history of America and you think about when people started like migrating, I don't even know when the Great Migration was like out here. Um, west, but I know I learned about it in like one yeah, of my history but classes. But like 1930s, I mean, that's still like very that's Dust Bowl. Early. That's yeah. why they moved. It was Dust Bowl. Yeah. Like that's all that southern part See, where. And I, I think I, I have a feeling that I like. I don't know. I was affected in my last life by the Dust Bowl, and I think I like migrated out to California. Yeah, you just figure it out. Yeah, you know, somehow, like, some way, yeah. that you find the pieces and you just go. Yeah. I know I was here. Yeah. I don't know how, I but know there's, how. it's like one of those weird things where you travel and go, somehow I feel I'm home. Yeah. No, that's exactly how I felt. Like, I was just like, this feels like home. To yeah. And every, it, 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 and there's that other part of you where like you're out traveling, you've already been there for a week yeah. and you go, I hate this. Yeah, I hate like, it here. I, I want to go back. home. Yeah. Like, I can't stand this yeah. place, you know? Yeah. Um, like I'll be gone for a week or two and just go, yeah, this place is fun. But, but <laughs> I want to go to yeah. Bound. I want to go to Beach yeah, Break. I want to go to. I, mean, so, there's something so I miss magical. my people. Yeah, like, exactly. And there's something so magical about just. I love. And I used to not be this way. I think this community kind of made me this way because I'm such an East Coaster. You know, I love going to the coffee shops and like seeing, you know, a few people that I know and being like, hey, what's up? Like, it's just nice to feel like you're known, you know other people. Love when I see you walking down the street, power strolling, and you're just like, eating. "Wait, stop! Come here! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are you doing out here?" Yeah, I'm just or like walking. the random times you're like, "Hey, are you at the stew?" And I'm like, "No, not today." But like, it's like if I which wanted, every time I text you, it's like we've missed I each know. other by like a five minute window. <laughs> I know. But I know it's just like, "Hey, I'm editing, and yeah. Kat and I are here. Come by and hang." Yeah, I'm like, exactly. "Okay, seriously, I'm down." Yeah. And we end up at like Revo or yeah. Bound or yes. God knows where. One of the many coffee shops. There's just so I mean, many, but they're all so here. good. They are, then for their own reason. I know, like, I know, but there are there's other places where it's just like no, I it's it's so strange. Like with coffee shops, you don't have like you're like this is my only place I go. I'm kind of that way. Yeah. But like, you know, I forget I can just walk to different places oh, and yeah. go. Oh yeah, there's three coffee shops here. There's another two down the block. Yeah. And blah, 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 blah. I mean, the options are endless. Oh, there's but and all of them have something different. Seriously, it's like all I the love, shops down here. That's why I love Revo because they make I drink almond milk and they make their almond milk, and it just you can tell the difference. And for me, like I'm like that is I've never been to a coffee shop that makes their almond milk. So other than them. Well, and again, it's one of those little hometown things where it's it just like the that adopted hometown pride. 
but then there's that other part of you that just like and I've had it happen I've had it happen for years where like you're walking down the street and go I'm so spoiled I live here yeah no literally like anytime I walk out and I look at the palm trees I'm just like how is this my life or like when I take a break and go walk my dog down Tremont I'm just like people walk down this that are not from here and they're like just like eyes glossed over like what? palm it's trees like, blue skies and it's 75 yes, degrees and it's like this is my every day yeah like, no i <laughs> that has to that yeah that like humbles me probably once or twice mm-hmm. a week where i go how the hell do i live here yeah and i can understand you know i know a few people that are also born and raised in southern california that are like i want to move it's expensive and i get it because it's i'm from the east coast i've lived in a bunch of different other places but moving here, I'm like, it doesn't get any better than this. No. It's really, really expensive. That is the only downfall. But, like, I'm like, when you look at what's around you and just the fact that you're two hours from the desert, two hours from the mountains, three hours from sand dunes. Sand dunes. Like, yeah. we don't have that on the yeah. East Coast. Like, you're in, like, if you hit El Centro, you're yeah. you're in the middle of a literal desert. Yeah. There's dunes and you're too, like it's you said. amazing. You know, you can hop from here yeah. palm springs la or you know part of uh like julian yeah. that's two hours each way i know you know it's wild it's crazy and it's like you can do that on the east coast don't get me wrong that's partly why and kind of like what i wanted to talk to you about because like you grew up here like you're in the music scene it's harder to see show like on the east coast you can i mean i'm so used to like I'm from Philly, we'll drive down to D.C., we'll go up, you know, to New York or yeah. whatever to see shows because totally. it's so easy to get to things. Right. People hit all those cities, like, down the coast, whereas in this area, it's really hard to see. A lot of bands that are bigger come here, but, like, we like a lot of smaller bands, too, and they don't really come to San Diego. They so. skip San Diego, and yeah. the closest you'll get is, like... LA or maybe Anaheim yeah, yeah. like if they're playing the will turn in LA and then yeah. the night before they were at like some other like the observatory in Anaheim or whatever oh no Anaheim yeah. that's uh observatory Santa Ana where's An- what was Anaheim's there there's a I, band Nick would know it. there's a band that I like that is yeah. uh they just announced their world tour and they're going LA Anaheim I was like what about us yeah and so we have like the observatory we have music can. box Balboa theater yeah. all these like places I was a uh, Thursday night I went and saw Tyler the Creator at Pachanga Arena. So cool. Oh, it was great. I love it. But that. Um, the last tour he did, he started in San Diego, yeah. which was cool. Yeah, um, there was a logistical yeah. change. Yeah. Um, originally, he was going to start it here, but uh, there was a weird mix up in Phoenix. So he ended up Phoenix to San Diego. But whatever. Yeah, and usually that's what it is. It's usually like Arizona, like Phoenix to San Diego. Or, yeah. And yeah. You notice that that's usually like where it comes You can from. pinpoint like how they're going to go on yeah, the East Coast tour. Exactly. Yeah. Because I know I've seen um, like. Ghost, I love that band. Yeah. They uh, they're notorious. They'll start, you know, kind of, no big deal. Madison Square Garden, yeah, <laughs> and then they're like Madison Square Garden, Boston Garden to D.C. and yeah. then down like one part and then zigzag up and down yeah. like it's a Richter scale yeah. to like and they hit almost every state, yeah, um, obviously except Alaska yeah, and yeah. like Hawaii. Poor Alaska. The, <laughs> those poor cities yeah. Foo Fighters did uh, eight nights in Alaska they did yeah it was great what? oh yeah it's like Metallica when they went and played in Antarctica right. so they could yeah, be the only band to play on every single continent oh yeah they're wow. yeah that was nuts I loved it oh, yeah. um, but they announced like I forget what the what, what the Foo Fighters it was like the Arctic tour or whatever yeah. but they did like four nights in one part of Alaska and like another four nights on another side. Yeah, and when you're on one side or the other, it is vastly different from one I've learned. It was like so, one night in Anchorage yeah. and then like God knows where the other big city is. Yeah. I, I went to Alaska when I was like six years old and yeah. I want to go back so bad because it was so much fun. I've never been there. It's, 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 yeah, it's odd, yeah. like in the best <laughs> way because yeah. you're walking around just like, huh. You probably feel like you're in a different country. Like you do. Well, I mean, you basically are. Yeah. at that point. Yeah, you're right. you're so close to Canada that yeah. if you take one wrong step, you're like, oh, yeah. okay. Oh, that's the border. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to end up having, yeah. you know, one of those mounted police going, hey, yeah. passport, please. Yeah. You know? Yep. Um, but yeah, it's just weird. Like, we... Yeah. The East Coast has so many more chances to catch acts that they want to see, but the West Coast still has their chance. San Diego's starting to get their its notoriety yeah. because we have the observatory, we have the music box, we've got Casbah. Yeah. 
Oh my god, I love that place. I love Casbah. Oh, dude. Soda Bar is another one. Yeah. You know, like you can see the trajectory of a band, and it's and I've worked it out in my head. Bingo. You sell out Soda Bar, you could probably sell out maybe Mm -hmm. um, Soda Bar to Mm Casbah to the Music Box, and then. I've never been. Is it new? It is. It had a very new vibe. So Kat and I saw um, Goth Babe, and we were we got there like super late. We were like okay with sitting in the back. Normally, I like to be at the front. Like I love to be in the front. I well, you. Well, I mean, you were in the pit for Dead yeah, Co. So it kind of gives it yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> um, I get myself in trouble at like hardcore shows. Like, That's fine. I I am like do not mosh near me and do not stage dive near me. Like stay away from me. I don't need to have a foot in my head. But I like to be like in the front and all the energy but anyways we were like okay with sitting in the back but then we got there and they were selling vip tickets which were only like 200 dollars, and you got like a table and you also got access to go to the front and it was 200 dollars consumable so basically like you got to just order anything off the menu and 200 dollars worth of like food oh so it drinks. was like 200 for the ticket but yeah. that 200 rolls, rolls over to your menu and drinks drink. Exactly. Oh my god, what a great, that's a really good deal. Yeah, I mean, we messed up because we ended up getting food before we ordered a drink, and then we were like, oh, let's do VIP, so we didn't really like... That's fine. You don't, but you figure so, it out along the way. It was worth it, though, because we got to go up to the front, and so I was just like, that's worth it to me. I'm didn't like, he play at this hat shop just yes, down the road? Oh my god. I remember, I remember yes. you posted that, and you were just like, what is he doing here? I know, and, and I, I had was, never heard of him, oh but god, what is... is that? He kind of, he gives me like that iron and wine vibe a little bit. Yeah, so definitely like I would say kind of electronic, kind of folky, kind of like surfery, definitely like West Coast vibe. I don't know if he's from Washington. I feel like he's from like Tennessee, actually. I could be wrong. Um, But I know he at one point was like living in Washington and making music out of his truck. He had like a truck with a trailer off of it. That's what I'm talking about. So that's like the majority of his early music he made out of his car. Um, And now he lives in, he does, I'm pretty sure. Um, But his music's awesome. It's just like, it's just definitely like music of this time. Um, And he just announced a new tour too. Yeah, Um, and he, oh my God, I was like. He's everywhere. He is. I mean, he blew up. Definitely. Yeah. And but yeah, he played that hat shop. <laughs> it's just like What are soft. you doing here? <laughs> yeah, and like you couldn't get in. Because he has a I mean, he has a huge following and I'm like, you are too big to be playing a hat shop in Oceanside. Like I, I don't think he realizes like how big of a fan like I feel like he's just super humble and doesn't really understand, but it's like he sold out the music box. I mean that yeah. place was packed. Well in San Diego his seems like kind of a safe haven for like well-known musicians. Yeah. Joe Walsh lives down here yeah. somewhere. Carlos Santana lives somewhere down here. What? Steve Perry yeah. of Journey. Yeah. The Steve Perry yeah. lives in San Diego. Okay. Um, you know, yeah. it, it, it's, I don't get it. Like quiet, Alicia like, Keys sweet. just bought a house in La Jolla. Okay, girl. You know, like she, like there's <laughs> yeah, a bunch of just famous, like yeah. well-known singer songwriters and just musicians in general that hide yeah. out down here, mainly because A, you're famous, cool. We don't really care. We don't We're, care. Yeah, it's just such a chill, like, sleepy beach town vibe. Yeah. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, the only people that'll probably approach you if you're, like, uber famous are tourists. Oh, if absolutely. you live around, yeah. well, you can just... they have that mentality of, like, you know, in California, I'm going to see, like, movie stars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's, like, that kind of energy. So yeah, sure but in, like, know. if you're famous and you're walking around San Diego, like, people are going like, to be like... Jonah Hill hangs out across the street. My which, man. which, what the hell is <laughs> that? Everybody when you... Me Instagram, they think I'm like the Jonah Hill, like I know everything about his like where I'm like, no, I don't, first of all, I don't know. I just know what people share with me. And I really want to meet Jonah Hill. I mean, it's I feel uh, like, why would you not? I know. He's a good dude. I want to photograph him. He's a great guy. Yeah, you know? I know, but he hangs out, he was at Revo, he was at Captain's Grounds, like he just like That's so strange that like, you know, you have well known people here. But uh John Mayer had this great thing on the hot ones where he was talking about like, you know, uh, the host Sean Evans was asking him like so what drew you to Montana he goes well there's that part where you know you live in a sleepy little town yeah. and you know 
people will just you know you're, you're in your you're in a grocery store and when people ask for photos other people are going hey leave them alone yeah but those same people are the ones that got their photos first you yeah, know exactly. it's like it's like if we're you know mm-hmm. if someone uber famous like i don't know why but like if slash is just walking down the street i'm, I'm gonna be like dude i need a photo with you yeah, like it's slash it's slash I mean, like but a, if i see him a second way. time it's just like Oh, cool, he's back again. And yeah. you just walk by. You already have your photo. You have already can say yes. you've met Slash. Yeah. And then he's just out and, on, out and about, and yeah. you just leave him it's alone. Of, yes. That's kind of the vibe here. And yeah. I think, like, more and more people are starting to realize that and just go, oh, they don't care. Yeah. But in, like, they don't care in a good way. Yeah. It's where like it's like, we, they'll leave me alone yeah, like and treat me like a here, person. Yeah, happy you're here, but also, like, we're going to treat you like a normal person. Yeah, exactly. We expect you to be treating people like a normal person. And also, Jonah Hill just blends in here. He like, really he, does. It, it's so, like, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even he know. He looks it. like he walked into Captain's helm and came out wearing, like, full, like, he, like someone styled him from, yeah. And he yeah, like, like, he just blends in. Yes. And I love that about yeah. him. Like, it's great. Yeah. Exactly. It, it's just, again... You can't help but love this place. No, but I will say, like, back to the venue thing, like, it, it's hard because Nick and I love to see bands play, like, multiple shows. Like, it's something that we just really love to do. And so on the East Coast, that was so easy to do. Um, but here, it's, it's just hard. It's like, you have to go to L.A. And, and again, like, two hours anywhere you want, but do you really want to drive from here to L.A. on a big show? Yeah, no. Excuse me, like that? Like, if no. you're following a band like The Dead mm-hmm. and you go from Chula Vista to the, you know, yeah. It's a lot. To the Hollywood Bowl. Yeah. It's not only, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of money, it's just a lot of energy. Well, it's funny because what I've noticed about Californians is you guys, like, because growing, like, living on the East Coast, like, I live in Philly and, like, driving to DC, or even living in Annapolis, Maryland, right? It's still Maryland, and driving to DC takes you, like, an hour and a half, and definitely you hit a lot of traffic. It's like the same kind of commute time with traffic. But it's, and people don't care about that on the East Coast, whereas like Californians, it's like you cannot get them to drive in traffic. No. I will not. Do you know I'm how gonna... much it bothers me when I drive the five going to the office and yeah. that little turn from um, Tamarack yeah. right by Cannon, yeah. uh, that like where that lagoon area yeah. is? Backed up, always. It's a turn. It's yeah. not that hard. No. The worst is when it rains. Oh my God, yeah. water's falling from the sky yeah. and everyone goes no. 60 to 20. Yeah, they don't it's know like, what to do. <laughs> you I are know. in a metal box I that know. wipes water yeah, off of it. Like, okay, Just it's drive. Oh my god! Know, Don't even get me. Funny, like, California. Do not like to drive in traffic. Oh. Whereas like traffic it, like this exists like where I've lived, and it's like I used to commute like an hour and a half to DC for work sometimes. Traffic, all traffic. Yeah, and that's just what it is. Yeah. But here, people no, are but, no. Like my just... friend who lives like in Loa, she's like. Uh, well, if I'm going to come up there, I'm going to wait until this because traffic. Like, it is like people do not want to hit any kind of tra- – and I get it. I don't like it either. Like, it sucks. Yeah. But it's just funny because it's like – I feel like I've developed that mentality from being here because that's, like, kind of how everybody else is. They're like – yeah. So it's just – it's harder to see shows out here in multiple, you know, places because it's like your options are, like – they come to San Diego. No, seriously. It's yeah. true. And uh, don't get me wrong. Like, I love, like, making that, that yeah. like, drive yeah. to go see a show. Mm-hmm. But there's that, that other... worth it. Yeah, exactly. Like, if there's a band that I've been wanting to see for years and yeah. they don't go to San Diego, but they're playing the Forum, yeah. if it's not too expensive, I'm mm-hmm. going to the Forum. For sure. Mainly because I've never been, so I'd like to, yeah. cr- you know, two birds, one stone. Get to say, I've been to the Forum, and then go see a sold-out show. Exactly. There. Yeah, you know, but there's that other part where it's just like, oh, they're you know, Tools playing Pachanga Arena, and I don't yeah. need to go to Staples Center. Bingo, Bingo. home in my you know, right in the backyard. I just drive you know, yeah. thirty five minutes. I'm there. Totally. Yeah. But it is that same thing where it's just like doors are at seven. Yeah, and, that and they don't go on till nine, so right. that means I'm not going to leave till eight. Right, exactly. Because there's like, no traffic. There's literally no point, and you don't even like we were going to go to a show this past week up in L. A. and we ended up not because they didn't go on until nine. And who was like, it? Um, it's just a smaller hardcore band called, um, I hope they're hardcore, it makes them kill me if I got the genre wrong. I don't know them too well, but they're called Modern Color. I think they're an LA-based band, I want to say. Um, and, but I don't, the openers didn't sound too good, so we didn't really want to go listen to them. And then they weren't going on until, like, probably 9, 30, 10, and we were like, we're not even going to get home until, like, 1. It just was, like... Tyler two. had three openers. Whoa. Really? Yeah. That doesn't surprise me, actually. Well, 
I'm good with one opener. Yeah, but if it's, three, if it's if it's it if it's if it's two openers and you don't go on till like ten thirty, yeah. we're gonna. Uh, I, it's a lot. I'm gonna enjoy the show, but in the back of my mind, it's gonna eat at me. Going, do you know how late it's gonna be when I go? Yeah, home? exactly. No, it's a lot, and it's like obviously like the energy kind of drops a little bit. A little bit. No, I I had that happen towards the end of the show yeah. where I was just like head bumping, but at yeah. the same time I was just like, like I want to go so home. So tired. You're yeah. Tired of standing. Yeah. It's a lot. To but commit. I have my. Uh, it's a stupid ritual, but I love it. Every time I go to a show, if I'm in San Diego, yeah. I go from the venue to in and out and home. Yeah, I always bring food have, home. Yeah, you need to nourish yourself. Oh, late night, that. get, get my energy back yes. and then go pass out. It's yes. great. Yes, oh, exactly. It's great. It's, that's the best, getting food after a show. Oh, it's just, you feel there's like your such, soul There's is something being about it. Yeah, exactly. Like there's just like, something about it. Yeah, But like, exactly. I can't not... I. There was a time where I went to four shows in five days. Yeah. That, mm -mm, no. <laughs> it was, it's fun to brag about where I was like, oh yeah, I went from, you know, the soda it's bar tiring. to the observatory yeah. or the soda bar to, shit, who was it? Um, oh my God, where was I? It was <laughs> soda bar to Chula Vista to the observatory and then to Soma. I think that's what it was because, okay. uh, my friend Mason, who's the guitarist for Rory, okay. who is one of the which one of the best local bands out of you know the Oceanside yeah, Fallbrook area. Yeah, I was actually area. I listened to that episode and I want to listen to that. Oh my god, it's they're awesome. so good! I cannot wait to hang out with them yes. soon-ish. I yeah. need to like message them. Mason, text me please. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, four shows in five days. Yeah, it's it's a lot. so much. But it's it was you know when you can at least sleep it off, you're good. Well, and that's like how it is with Nick. It's like when he likes a band it's like especially living on the east coast like he wants to see them like in any spot on the east coast that's within like a two hour drive and so like there will be times where it's like we'll see it's not like necessarily four days in a row but we'll go to like three shows they might be spaced out by like a day or two and it's like by the third one I'm just like and you get into it but then you're just like I can't do I'm this done anymore. I'm done. Yeah, like I'm tired. tapped out, yeah. like exhausted. For sure. Because it's a commitment. No, I know. know. It absolutely is a commitment. At yeah. the, oh, but it's just so much fun. Have you seen any um, concerts on the East Coast at all? No. Okay. And the one thing that I want to do, because there's like that mental list of like bucket list yeah. venues Places. I want to go to. Yeah. I want to go to Madison Square I've Garden. Never seen anybody I want to see Boston Garden. Yeah. Um, I don't know what to what Philadelphia has. I don't know what. Not that good. I mean, I know Hershey has good really, stuff. Allentown yeah. has Hershey stuff. Hershey where they bigger the bigger bands. Like that's where I saw Rolling Stones. I'm almost positive was Hershey. Which is like, Hershey isn't even like that big. Isn't that big of a city? No, it's not. It's like a but, really podunk little town where like Hershey chocolates from. Right, and, and they're just so they like, like you know what? Big arena. Yeah. And Who's I think playing? it's because Rolling Stones. they can draw, you know, people from, you know, you're a little closer, I think, like, commute-wise from New York. Like, you get people from, like, New York, like, people that, like, follow. The people who are the followers. Yeah. yeah. But that, I mean, that's where, like, Tom Petty played, Rolling Stones. McCartney um, plays there all the time. I'm sure that's where I saw The Who. Uh, yeah, it's like, they usually go to Hershey. And they'll go to Philly, don't get me wrong. Like, they'll usually do two Pennsylvania shows. Yeah. Like, one in Philly. And I don't know, I'm so bad with any names. Like on, I know smaller venue names because like I remember those places. Well, it's like the bigger venues. Exactly. They're always like changing because it's like some bank name. Chula like, Vista has changed their names yeah. four times in the last what? F it feels like the last five yeah. years. Because I remember it as a kid. It was yeah. Sleep Train Amphitheater. Yeah. Then it became Mattress Firm. Yeah. Then it became um, something else. But now it's the North Coast Island yeah. Credit Union Amphitheater yeah. or whatever. Yeah. You know, or North Island or whatever the hell. And, but again, with my parents, you know, they were just like, oh, you want to know what it was called when uh, it was yeah, first built? Sure. Coors Amphitheater. Yeah. And they, they were like, oh, yeah, we saw Jimmy Buffett there in, like, early 2000s, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's crazy. I just never remember those names because they don't have, like, special names. I just did remember, though, that when people come to Philly, they often will actually play in Camden, New Jersey, which is like just over the bridge. Camden is another big yeah, one. Yeah, that's like where I've seen a lot. Like I saw Radiohead there, and yeah, very big venue. So it's just so weird, like because the East Coast is, and that's another point. The yeah. East Coast is so lumped together. Yeah. You can ping pong to five different states. Yeah, no, easily, and that's and what it's we do so simple. When we see music. I mean, 
our smaller bands that we like to follow around like that's what we would do and so. again it's just like what is it 10 bucks at the door cool yeah. seven shows 70 exactly. bucks and you know I don't care if it's in a sweaty little no. bar. No, oh my god, no, those are the better. I, like I have more fun That's at why those I really shows. I really like Casbah. Like, I have just gone to Casbah. Or the poorhouse. Yeah, you know? definitely, exactly. Even the Moose Lodge has a lot of fun. Dude, the Moose Lodge is like my new place. Oh, like, it's so, get my so good. Uh, <laughs> let's do it today. Yeah. Let their play. We're recording this the day of the Super Bowl. Yeah. We can do it today. Yeah. They <laughs> open at two. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Hopefully, this goes up by like. Tomorrow ish. Yeah, I have no idea. No, Between gosh. like, I, yeah, you have a lot going on. I have. I'm just so You're busy. Interning, I'm interning. Things, I'm trying to. Yeah. Post school, post college life. That is just crazy. That's crazy That's to think huge. about. You like I mean, college. graduated college, yeah. and now I'm like an intern, Inter- yes. and then I'm doing like trying to figure out my own way through the world. Yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up, uh, which is just. It's just so funny talking about just like the connection and everything yes. was like when you and Kat with, you know, your other business with Astra and Jay, yes. where you're just like, oh, we're doing headshots. I was like, yes, yes. that yes. now, please. Yes. And then it was just like, hey, you want help on your brand? Sure. Yes. T- here's, here's my card. We're Do whatever you want. branding Neil Knows Records, everyone. Just mm-hmm. wait. It's going to be so epic. You don't even know what is coming. I don't even know yeah, what's coming. It's going to be great. John does not even know. So, yeah, but I, your headshots were awesome. Oh, and it was so... I, I, love this, I love when I think about it, and I was like, I'm going to have you do this with the record, and you were like, no. No. <laughs> I'm like, no. respect. Like, honestly. I was like, I hate to be that guy, but... No, you were not No, I don't guy. want to harm my album. You're like, okay, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> no, Fair enough. I mean, that's like the one thing it feels so weird when you're in someone else's space and you tell them no. Yeah. I felt bad and saying I no. I feel bad though, you know? Like, I feel like that's the world we're in is like boundaries. No, oh, I know. Yeah, it's like, yeah. it's your vinyl. You know it I'm is sure. what it is. <laughs> yeah. I, I know. just thought it was, that was just like a typical Carrie Ann, like, I have Carrie Annism, like, not really thinking because being like, let's do this. But you literally, so like, but you, why that's you? your job. You yeah. run a studio. Like, yeah. you, this thing is a well oiled machine. It seems like every day you have clients, but then again, it's back to what you know yeah. we were talking about of like how you've made headway in the community in less than like a few years. Yeah. Everybody knows you or want to know you yeah. because of your work. Um, like by trade, uh, Carrie Ann, you do is a boudoir photographer, and I have to wonder just because it's something that I'm I'm obviously unfamiliar with, yeah. um, and I'm sure you know, like we had said before we even recorded like that's been around for you know a long a time, long time. Yes, but definitely. obviously that's not something you end up pursuing just like you know going to school for and going you know what i'm gonna do this no. you obviously find your way there definitely, yeah. but you know i don't know how many like studios offer that yeah. in this area it yeah. seems like you're one of the only ones yeah. but you know the work you do is beautiful yeah, and you. you seem to be just like every week is just yeah. booked i just like to work <laughs> like, I just want to work. <laughs> no, but I mean, yeah, you're right. You don't go to school. I went to art school. I have my uh, bachelor's in fine arts, uh, specializing in photography. And you don't go to school. Like, there's no class on boudoir photography. There's no class on, like, learning how to do this. It's something that you just kind of, like, stumble into. Um, I thought I was going to be a fashion photographer. I really was convinced. Like, I grew up following, like, especially photographers like Annie Leibovitz because she used to photograph for the Rolling Stones. Like, I actually thought I was going to be a photojournalist before anything else. I, like, wanted to be that, you know, band photographer that was, like, following bands and, like, touring with bands. And, like, I followed a lot of photographers like that. And then I thought I was going to be a fashion photographer. And even, you know, a few years out of college when I was shooting with Under Armour, like, I still was like, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. And then it's like my soul knew what I needed to do, even though I was like fighting it. Yeah, and where you're just myself, like, but this is what's gonna be. I was be. like telling myself, like, I need a nine to five, like, I need health care, like, I need to be, you know, I felt like so validated working a nine to five, and then like it was so soul crushing. Yeah, like, no, I understand. A lot of good things came out of that, but it, like, I definitely learned so much, and I can attribute so much of like how I shoot now to that job, but like, 
deep down I knew that like I needed to work with people on like a soul to soul level yeah. and so it's funny because like obviously like my style of photography fits into the genre of boudoir but like I really just like working with humans which is yeah. why like even just doing headshots for you it's like I love that it's just another form of just connection yeah. like when you're doing like you said with Under Armour stuff which I didn't know you did I yeah. pro I'm not good at interviewing anymore <laughs> okay. this is the last episode no, I decide so, I'm going to retire no, no, no I'm so joking I don't talk about it that well, much so yeah why would you know Exactly, but that's the other thing where it's just like, why don't I ask more questions? It's fine. Yeah, but it's kind of like the way um, you know, with the internship I have, I'm you know, intern. For those who know and for those who don't, I'm in, I'm an intern at a local record label. I won't say the name just to, for the sake of like you know, yeah. keeping things under wraps. Yeah. But being for a local record label, it's taught me that I don't want to be in like a big name yeah. corporation Definitely. because. I don't know what it is, but there's just that idea of like, hey, I need this done, and it gets done in five minutes. In but in like yeah. a big name thing, it's like, hey, can I need to get this done? Okay, well, I need to send an email to this person who's going to email them, yeah. and it's a five chain email. Yeah. And it's not uh -uh. simple. That's, it. but again, with the way my world, my brain is, it's not that just like you know, um, what's the term? Um, but instant gratification. Yeah. But it's just one of those things where it's just like. If it can get done, can get done. Huh, <laughs> if it can get done quickly, <laughs> oh yeah. If it can get done quickly, good. Yeah, that's no, what I want. Sure. But if it takes me five hours just to get like an A OK on an assignment, I yeah. will lose my mind. Yeah. Well, you're also a Libra, and you're very like yeah. 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 It just doesn't stop. No. <laughs> I'm I'm well I'm yeah. well I'm a well aware of yes. what the Libra little. Is. Yeah, yes. no, this, my, uh, <laughs> I baffle metal, medical science because I don't have a brain. I have a hamster running in a wheel, <laughs> and it's uh, currently being fed deep ball. It just doesn't <laughs> stop running. Um, God, yeah, but it's, it again, it all comes down to just, like, that human yeah. connection. That's yeah. why, like, I no. wanted to talk to you because it's, like, you work in photography, but you also have that connection to music yes. and how huge photography plays a role in music, you know? Even though it's silent, yeah. you can you can hear the crowd. Like you'll yeah. see photos from um, I forget his name, but he photographed you know Led Zeppelin. Oh, he yes. photographed the Eagles I and Crosby, Stills, Nash. Person, uh, I'm yeah. blanking. I I can see his face and I can't you'll think of his name. Be like, this is your one. I was oh, just yeah. like I figured it out. Yeah. Um, but like there's a great photo that he took of it was at the Beverly Hills, oh. at the Beverly Hilton. Yeah. And he took the photo in '72. It's yeah. You know, timeless. Golden God, Robert yeah. Plant, you know, yeah. 72, yeah. right after, I yeah. think, the Untitled Record at the Forum. Yeah. I mean, he's just, you know, it's yeah. a great pose and all everything, but you can just, it's a, you feel the photos energy. don't speak, yeah. but you can hear that crowd. Definitely. Like, it's crazy Absolutely. how much I love rock and roll photography. Yes. No, I, I, and I wish I had more of it in my room. Like, I need more. I know. It's so, like, um... It's just really raw and like really and like I I'm so I gravitate to that style of photo like it's why I'm also very into film and just like raw moments and it's that's when I think of like photography from you know the seventies music scene it's like that's it's like it's just it is what it is and yeah it's like but it's it's like you said it's like you can feel so much from it yeah really well last night i finally watched a movie that i have had people like yelling at me for like yeah, how have you not right. seen this movie um you know i collect records i'm interning at a at a record label yeah. i'm just yeah, big into concerts music. and i've never seen almost famous do you know what, what? yeah that's like you a, know people have the same way i literally like i watched that in 2015 i watched it for the first time last night i was like yeah. i am William Nick Miller, like, I am yeah, that kid. Yeah, you know, you are. I was like, um, that's me. And I think Nick, when that, he told, I was like, it somehow came up, and I'm like, hey, I've never seen that. And you're like, what? Sit this down. Like, you're going to, I have some like, literature yeah, for I you. It's such a good movie. It's so good. I, yeah, sure I watched it last that. night, and I was just like, everything about this is perfect. I'm so sure. when you said, like, Annie Leibovitz, like, yes. the word that talks about, yes. like, you know, Stillwater's making the cover, yeah. and, you know, Annie Leibovitz is going to yeah. be shooting it, I was yeah. just like, She's I know. Huge I know, like and it's annoying because, like, I, I don't really. It's not that I don't like her work now, but it's like I, there's just something so like annoying about when you make it as a photographer in the industry, where it's like 
you have your assistants and they set up the set for you and they are the ones creating the image. You're just right. clicking You're just there clicking so a like, button. I love Amy Leibovitz like when she was doing that style of photography because she, you know, one of the things in her book that I have of by her that she talks about is how growing up like her family used to drive a lot. I guess they moved a lot and she just developed a love for photography through literally just looking out of her car window and just seeing an image like through a square just kind of like helped her like find a love for photography and so I, I really respect her and the work that she did at that time because like she really paved the way for like a lot of photographers too and obviously like there weren't a lot of female photographers in that industry right. as well so but nowadays it's like she just shows up on set and it's like but I'm like, and I, that's like, I could never imagine like getting to that place as a photographer, like just showing up and having having everything ready, and then I just have to like click the shutter. It's like there's so much magic. You in the definitely process. seem to be the type of person that just goes, I don't care if you are my assistant, I'm yeah. setting this up because yeah. I need that. Yeah, like the process. Is it so makes important. you feel more in like more yeah. Yeah, involved. Like you're, right, and, and and you know, and I grew up shooting film photography, and so there's such a process with film. For sure. Right, like. I grew up learning how to develop negatives and then taking the negatives and then printing them and then running the print through the developer, through the fix, like all of that. And so there, the image making process, like even shooting film, it's like there's the image making process of like taking a photo of someone and then there's the image making process of like processing the film and the, and the prints. And now when you shoot digital, like so much of that process like gets lost because it's all digital and so it's so important that I am like very involved in how I make images you know like that's why I always like play around with like shooting through light and shooting through different textures and stuff because I think I crave such an old school way of shooting where it's so like tactile and like analog and well and that's what drew me to vinyl it's yeah. not because like oh i need to hear it in its purest form it's because yeah. i like having something that's physical yeah you know like cds sure yeah. but like as much as i stream music if i can hold on to a physical yeah. just piece of plastic that makes noise yeah it's been around for like 120 years yeah. and it still blows my mind oh, where i, I was just like i put me a needle on a black yeah. disc or colored vinyl or whatever and, it sound and sound comes through speaker Look. I don't understand it and Nick has like explained it to me before and I'm just like oh and I know how it works yeah, and I, I still know. can't even explain it to myself yeah, I don't get it I still look at it and I'm just like this is voodoo like yeah. this is just what it is I no. don't get it it's no crazy. well and back to what you were saying with just like having the way you develop film like yeah. the way at, you know looking at the photos that you post on your like on yeah. your page after you've done like a photo shoot the way you edit your photos you add a little more light there's yes. that little graininess yes. like you're shooting on a dslr yeah. but your photos look like they came out of a 35 know, millimeter need that. <laughs> yeah where it's just like it looks high definition yeah. but, but there's the there's like the outside graininess. touches yeah Oh, I love that aesthetic yeah. so much. Thank I can't you. even explain it. It's, like, it. so nice to hear that you, like, notice that, especially because, you know, obviously, like, other creators or, like, photographers pick up on that, but, like, someone that's not in this, like, industry, it's nice to, like, hear that. Well, and the other thing is, else. like, and it's not just because, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, <laughs> you know, the star sign. It doesn't matter, yeah. like, who or what you do. If yeah. you're working in something where detail is oriented, yeah. like, I love... The reason, another reason when it comes to vinyl, I love being able to read the back of a, yes. of a sleeve and just go, who produced it, yeah. who mastered it, where was it recorded? Yeah. It's because I live to, it's uh, that deep dive. It's yeah. that like, you know. Whose you, hands touched this? Right, like, who, what's, where are the finer details? Yeah. So that's why I'm able to pick up on like specific things. I don't know how, I don't yeah. know why, but that's just how, you know, yeah. how the chips fell. Yeah. So when, yeah, that's why I wanted to bring it up. It's just like, you just notice these things. Yeah. Because I, I know, have coming to know you for the last almost two years now, which yeah. is just mind I know, blowing. Crazy. Um, there's a way that you do your photography, just like there's a way I talk about records. Yeah. It's all you know. It all comes back to yeah. connectedness, yeah. and I just love it. I love, I it. love it. I love how we can draw these, con you know, because it's like when you asked me to be on the podcast, I was like, oh my gosh, he wants me to be on his podcast. Like it's just because so many people are like. I don't know, like, they see boudoir and they're like, oh, like, that's so different. That's, that's like, what does that have to do with music? Right. 
but there's a lot of stuff where yeah. it all intermingles. No, it's a weird dance, but you you it can is. still figure it's it out. I really appreciate how you like. It's so crazy that like I don't know. It just speaks a lot about you and how your brain works, and obviously you're creative, even though you might not feel like that you are. Like the fact that you're able to draw and bridge those connections, like on how two very different things are similar really cool well and i appreciate it but that's why i was like i need to have a sit <laughs> yeah. down and i know i've already said like oh you know live from the back room the podcast for music lovers by music lovers but yeah. it's like you know i want it to be more than that because i want to involve it basically yeah. yeah it's just it's all about the connection Definitely. but it's always going to have music somewhere involved. Yeah. yeah that's just the way it is at yeah. least in my head no, so definitely I cannot thank you enough. This has been so much fun. Oh my god, I, I loved had a it. Blast. Thank I'm you glad. For having me. Before we end all of this, yeah. feel free plug promote anything and everything you want to talk about. You know. <laughs> um, yeah. So my name is Carrie Ann Kelly. You can find me on Instagram at Carrie Ann Kelly. Um, yeah, I mean that's where I share most of my stuff. Obviously, from there you can find my website, but. Um, if you want to book a session, yeah. If you want to book a session, feel free. Um, you can find me on my website. Send in a contact form. Um, we'll start the conversation and get groovy. Uh, that's like the greatest thing yes. about. Yeah. I don't know where that came from. I, I don't either, but I just. And it feels like my identity. It, I just love it. Yeah. If, uh, if you're around in the area and you uh, happen to drive through Oceanside and you see a large glass uh, <laughs> storefront that says, let's get groovy, you've come to the right place. Yeah, you found my studio. And boudoir, I mean, I shoot boudoir, but, like, really, I just, like I said, I like... I shoot photos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I take photos of people. I like working with people. I like connecting. And, like, the day you came to the studio for your headshots, it's like we literally spent 10 minutes shooting but like an hour and a half just talking about laughing. like, oh, I saw Paul McCartney here. And I'm like, well, I saw Blondie here. And yeah. We're just like, oh, it was like, like one upping each other. But like we were 45 of like Paul McCartney. But we were just laughing the whole yeah, day. It was yeah, great. And that's the shit I love. Oh, so. it's great. Yes. Again. Yes. Love it. Uh, as usual, you can find your ever humble podcast host at Needle Nose Records, N double E D L E N O S E Records. I have had a phenomenal time. I'm so happy to be back. First podcast of the year. I'm going to be doing one of these once a month. No clue when the next one's going to come out, but it will be in March. Thank you all for listening. I look forward to talking to you all soon.